the European corn borer, or Austrinia nubilalis, is in the family of insects known as Crambidae. It is one of the ear boring insects that can be found in many different crops, such as wheat, in some cases apples, but mostly grain crops like sorghum, wheat, and in the crop that we're going to focus on today, corn, from which it derives its name. Now, the European corn borer as can be figured from the name, is originally native to Europe. This insect proved to be a formidable pest within the grains grown in Europe. Now, the turn of the 19th century brought the introduction of this pest into the United States. It is believed that the pest was introduced through a port brought, on, brought in by a ship carrying grain or a grain product in Massachusetts. Now, the European corn borer is, as I said before, one of the ear-boring insects, ear-infesting insects that affect the marketability of the corn crop in North Carolina. The life cycle of the European corn borer begins with an adult moth. Once the moth has mated and is ready to lay its eggs, the adult female moth will locate a new crop or a new plant within a crop to lay her eggs. These eggs are extremely small and will be laid on the stems the leaves and even the ear shoots of the corn crop. Given a period of days 3 to 21, a larva will emerge from the eggs and begin to bore into the corn crop. It can bore through the leaves, it can bore into the stalks, and even into the ear of the corn itself. After a period of time, the larva begins to pupate within the stalk of the corn and Given about 14 to 21 more days, the, a new moth will emerge, ready to begin the life cycle over again. Up to four generations of European corn borer moths can emerge from a corn crop in North Carolina. The damage from the European corn borer is quite apparent in windy situations where lodging becomes, where lodging becomes obvious. The bore channels of the larva weaken the stem and allow the stems to fall over given a stiff breeze. Now to deal with the European corn borer we're going to look at the PAMS approach. The PAMS approach starting with prevention uh, poses some issues for us mostly mostly because the moths themselves are very strong flyers and are able to fly many miles on uh, wind gusts and the jet stream. Now, cultural methods such as stalk destruction offer the most control of generations. Avoidance is the best bet to the, avoid the losses that can be brought on by the European corn borer. Should be the first thought in a pre-planting plan for a grower. Selecting varieties, preferably BT lines that have the Cry1AB or Cry1F genes are recommended and getting the crop out in time to prevent lodging damage. Now, moder monitoring poses a new set of issues. One, the eggs of the insect are extremely small. Scouting will be tricky. Sweep nets will allow for identity of the moss to be uh, revealed. But the best way to know if you have European corn borers within a crop is look for entry holes and look for frass and silk at the, in at the beginning of the entry holes. Now, as I said earlier, bore tunnels will weaken the stems and it will reduce the yields of the crop. Now, suppressing the European corn borer is a whole other set of problems. In the past, insecticides were heavily used, but only about the first generation control is available for the European corn borer. And North Carolina has no set threshold for the European corn borer, which poses a new set of issues. Now, there are some parasitoids that can be used for the European corn borer, and these parasitoids uh, include several paras parasitoid wasps and flies as well as ladybird beetles and predaceous mites. Uh, these biological controls offer some good regulation of the corn borer and when used with other methods as mentioned earlier such as the uh, stubble stalk destruction and BT corn varieties uh, you can get fairly good management of the European corn borer. So in summary, 
Corn is, of course, an important cash crop in the state as well as the nation. It should be protected. Uh, regulation cannot be focused solely on chemicals as it only as chemicals only allow for control of a first or second generation. Stubble destruction, variety selection, and timely harvest are the best options to allow for control of this pest. Management strategies must, absolutely must be based off an integrated pest management system. We thank you for watching this video. We hope it provided with you with some good information. If you're looking for more information, it can be found at the link provided here in North Carolina State University's Extension Specialists.